just because it just seems to principalize. So I mean, I don't even know if that's the right word. It seems to give you a real picture of what I'm talking about. Judges chapter 16, verse 29 and 30 through 30. And Samson took a hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of one of them with his right hand, the other with his left. And Samson said, here it is, here it is. Here's the principle right here. This was real. This was physical. This was really happening. But I, this is what I want to principalize. Let me die with the Philistines. And, be bow, and he bowed himself with all of his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they that he slew at his life. And then let's go to 2 Kings. I'm no, nowhere even going to be able to touch these scriptures this morning because I just want to give them as a text. And Elisha died, and they buried him, and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land of the coming of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied out a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. When the man was let down, he touched the bones of Elisha. He revived, stood upon his feet. One more scripture, New Testament. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. You can be seated. The power of a dead man. That's what we have to have. That's where we need to be. That's the practical side of being crucified with Christ. In 1903, all the communists in the world met together, and the reason for the meeting was they were trying to figure out a way to make communism grow because it was stunted. It didn't seem to have any advancement. So they were trying to get it to grow. There was about 200 that met together, this little international band, and they were speaking of ways and means to grow communism. Some said we need a compromise. We need to lower the requirements that it belongs to be a communist because they're too rigid, too straight, too strict. And they spoke long on compromise. And yet there was Lenin, who was definitely the leader of that band. And Lenin stood up. And he said, as they listened to him, he said, listen, folks. He said, I don't want to hear about compromise anymore. He said, there will be no more talk of compromise in communism. He said, what we need in, com in communism is not people that are willing to die for communism what we need in communism, if it's going to grow, we need people that are already dead, indeed dead, and walk in the streets of our cities. And I want you to know, if we're ever going to touch Muskogee, Oklahoma, or any place that we're planted, can I tell you the only way that it's going to be is when Jesus is resurrected inside of us and he lives his life out of us. But in order to do that, how many knows there's got to be less of you and more of him? There's got to be a death to yourself uh, and a resurrection in power and life. Uh, and I want you to know if we're ever going to touch this world, what God is in need of is not people that are willing to die for Christianity, uh, but people that are already dead, indeed dead, uh, and walk in the streets of our cities. Uh, I'm talking about dead to sin. Uh, I'm talking about dead to sinning. I'm talking about dead to self-righteousness and selfishness. Uh, people that have planted their feet on God's unshakable foundation uh, and bowled their shoulders back uh, and said, nah, I, I am crucified with Christ. Uh, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Uh, you find me a man, a woman, a boy, a girl uh, that'll fall on that altar and die on that altar uh, and be resurrected in Jesus Christ, and I'll show you somebody uh, that'll be resurrected in power. Uh, I'll show you a revival. Uh, I'll show you a spiritual cataclysmic uh, event that'll take place that devils and demons cannot handle, uh, they cannot control, uh, and they haven't got a fire 
fire extinguisher big enough to put it out. Uh, somebody that's willing to die out. Uh, somebody that's willing to say, God, uh, we need a revival in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Uh, we've had enough religion. Uh, we've had enough of this and that and another thing. Uh, I'll tell you what the world is in need of. Uh, it's in need of the real power uh, and anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, that will resurrect people. Uh, and when people come in this house uh, and they rub against those dead men's bones just like in the day of Elisha, they're revived uh, and they stand back up on their feet. Uh, but it's never going to be uh, until we're willing to be crucified with Christ. Amen. Amen. Crucified. I was in Washington, D.C. one time preaching a revival and they took me to the FBI building and, and I, I, I watched and I looked at all the memorabilia and all the things they had. But there was one thing that really got my attention. When he went into this room and there's these big posters on the wall and there were 10 of them and, and, and there was the 10 most wanted people in America. <laughs> Thank God I wasn't on it. <laughs> a little nervous, but wasn't on it. And, and I, I, I looked at and I noticed some were wanted for espionage, some were wanted for murder, some were wanted for this, that, and that. All the crimes were different. And there was a multiplicity of crimes. But there was one thing synonymous with every one of those posters. Uh, I mean, it, they were big posters. And at the bottom of every poster, uh, it said, Caution. This person is considered armed and extremely dangerous. And I leapt out of there and I thought to myself, because, you know, once a preacher, always a preacher, and I always see a sermon in everything I see. And I said, I would to God that I could be on hell's ten most wanted list. Uh, I'd like to be listed with such crimes as casting out devils, healing the sick, uh, even raising the dead spiritually. Amen. Uh, but most of all, I'd like you to say at the bottom, caution, uh, this man is armed uh, and he is extremely dangerous. Uh, you know why? Because you are, if you walk with God, God and God walks in you, uh, there will be a revival. Uh, everywhere Paul went, there was a, either a, a revival or a riot, one of the two, uh, because God's man was on the scene. Uh, I'm telling you, it's the same Christ. Uh, it's the same gospel. It's the same Holy Ghost. Uh, it's the same. Nothing's changed. Uh, all God is looking for is somebody uh, that'll say, I'm, di I'm tired and I'm sick and tired uh, of my flesh ruling me and, rule and walking and living in the flesh. Uh, it's time that we live in the spirit of God uh, but the only way to get there, uh, you got to die out to yourself uh, and let Christ live through you. That's the practical side. I know, I know positionally we're there. I know that. But what about the practical side? There's lots of things in our lives that we can say, God, is this really pleasing to you? Is this really what you want? Are you extremely dangerous to the devil? I mean, when you wake up in the morning, do you get him say, oh, no, Mr. Devil, don't do nothing to me today. Is that the kind of life you live? You need to get to the place when you wake up in the morning, your eyelids begin to move. The devil said, oh, no, they're, they're about to get up. Let's get up out of here. Hello? You see, God's plan on the earth is not to have for the church to have the best softball team in town. That's not God's plan. It's not God's plan we have the best basketball team in town and we have all these trophies. You know what God's plan is? That he can raise up a spiritual beachhead right here on South 32nd Street and people can know that there's a living God in heaven because we're in a warfare, brother. We're not on a cruise ship. On a cruise ship, they pamper you. I mean, they even put little things on your pillow. I've been on one before and and when you come in, your towel's in the form of a monkey or a giraffe or whatever, and the, you, you, you just as a, con a continual feed. It, it's a buffet on water, and they just want to make, you got enough water? You got enough of this? You got enough of that? Would you like a little wine? No, don't drink wine. Would you like, a, you know, a, would you like another steak, another lobster? I, I ate about three lobsters. They said it was all you can eat. And so, so, but man, they pamper you. I'm telling the truth. Here's some worldwide travels right here. They're taking more, more vacations on the water. And Carter has liver pills. <laughs> they don't get that, okay? <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's not a cruise ship. We're not on a cruise ship. We're on a battleship. 
and it's time to mend our battle stations. Uh, that's what God is in need of. He's not looking to have the best sports team in town. That's not the plan of God. Uh, the plan of the God is that God planned us here uh, and that the devil would say, Jesus I know uh, and Paul I know uh, and, and you know what? Life point I know. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about being known of the devil. Uh, we've got too many people uh, that are like, like those seven sons of Sceva when the devil said, they said, we're going to preach, we preach Jesus in the name of, or we preach, we preach in the name of Jesus of whom Paul preaches. Uh, and the devil said, well, Jesus I know, uh, and Paul I know, but who in the devil are you? Amen. Uh, I mean, you, I don't know who you are. God, God's looking for somebody. Uh, it's on the devil's ten most wanted list. Somebody say amen. Uh, and, the, and Paul was. Uh, and the point is, Paul, I know. Uh, you got that? Paul, I know. Sure, he knew Jesus. They knew Jesus. Uh, they knew Jesus. That's why they said, don't cast us uh, into torment before our time up there on at the Gadareans. But I want you to know, they also knew who Paul was. Uh, how did they know Paul? Because Paul was a walking, talking dead man. Uh, he walked the streets of that city, those cities, uh, and he was very much alive in Christ. Uh, he accused the accuser. Uh, he planted the, uh, churches right on the very doorstep of the devil. Uh, he raised the dead. He healed the sick. Uh, he preached the gospel, set the captive free. Uh, and when it was all said and done, the devil said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. Uh, and I want you to know, uh, he knew Paul because it was no longer Paul. Uh, it was Jesus Christ living uh, and functioning uh, and abiding inside of him. Oh, I'm preaching so much better than you're amen in me. Are you, are you, are you dead? Came in one morning, one one yeah, one afternoon. I was praying in the church. Back when Cleet and I used to preach full time revivals. I wish you're thinking you're doing it today too, aren't you? <laughs> and, and, and I came in. I got this revelation a long time ago. I said revelation. It's not really a revelation. I just got I got this thought and illumination, I should say. And, and I came in. I said, baby, baby, I know what we're missing. She said, what? I said, I know what it takes to have a revival. She said, well, thank God you know something. I said, no, I'm serious. I said, I know what it takes. She said, what's it going to take? I said, it's going to take, I'm going to have to die. And she said, I got a gun right over here. You want me to go get it? <laughs> I said, no, baby. She really did. I said, no, baby. I said, I, I, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being, being dead to yourself. Too much self in the church. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. There's this devil caster out. Have you ever heard of one of those? Had a great tent put up, casting out devils. Everybody came through the line. They had a devil. He looked him right betwixt the eyes and said, I see a demon in you. I'm going to cast that demon out. Well, there's about a 75-year young lady <laughs> come up there. She's weak and about 120 pounds, 100, well, about 100 pounds soaking wet full of bananas. I mean, she's just a little frail lady. He looked her right between the eyes and said, woman, I see a demon in you, and I'm going to cast that demon out. And he laid his hand on her head, and before he could say another word, she done got him by the arm, done him a toro or two, chunked him on the ground, started beating his head into the ground. He finally got shook loose of the lady, uh, ran over beside the stage and said, I said, that's a real one, ain't it? Amen. Uh, he got a hold of a real devil, prove whether or not he had the real power or not. Uh, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who in the world are you? Uh, I want you to know only dead men can cast out devils. Uh, only dead men can preach the gospel with life. Uh, only dead men can heal the sick. Uh, only dead men can do the works of God. Uh, it takes somebody that's willing to be dead. Uh, we got too many people that are not crucified. Uh, we want to hold on to the old man. Uh, we want to hold on to the old old life and the old self uh, but you let me tell you something until you let go of that old life and say this is it uh, enough is enough draw a line in the sand and say today I'm going to die uh, and in my dying there's going to be a resurrection uh, and in that resurrection there's going to be a new man woman boy or girl uh, and I want you to know it's not till that point uh, that God begins to work in your life uh, you've got to be willing to die to yourself you got to because if you don't, you're only doing it in the flesh. Got a lot of things going on in the flesh today. Mm -hmm. But we need to be crucified with Christ. The cross stands for death. The cross is a symbol of death. Every man that ever picked up a cross, he knew one thing. 
he was going to die. When you picked up a cross, guess what? You said goodbye to your mama. You said goodbye to your daddy. You said goodbye to all your friends and family because you knew when you got on that cross, you was going to die on the cross. That cross never, never, it never, uh, it, all, it killed every man it ever took. That's what I'm trying to say. Every man that was ever crucified on the cross died on the cross. Even Jesus. They put him on the cross. Six hours later, they took him off the cross. And guess what? He was dead. But in that third day, oh, it was Friday. Sunday's coming. And he got up in resurrection power. And that's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. You got to be willing to die. You got to be willing to die if there's ever going to be a resurrection. Understand that. Got to die. A young preacher was preaching one time, and he was preaching along these lines, and he made a little mistake. He, he, he just got caught up in a little point. You got to kill the old man. That was his sermon. You got to kill the old man. Talking about the old man, the old nature, and he just got stuck right there. You got to kill the old man. 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 And all of a sudden, he just happened to just zero in on one little couple, and he just kept pointing, you got to kill the old man. She finally jumped up and said, I can't kill him. I love him. Amen. Well, anyhow, that's the problem. We love him too much. We love him too much. We want to pamper him. We want to pet him. We want to make him feel good. That cross never made anybody feel good. You have to deny yourself, pick up a cross, and follow me. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, unless a corn of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it abideth alone. It's got to die. And if it dies, then it'll bring forth some fruit. I want you to know there's no power outside of Jesus Christ, and there's no power outside of Jesus being resurrected in us. Praying in the flesh will not work. Uh, speaking in tongues uh, in Jesus' name still won't work if he's not alive on the inside of you. Uh, you've got to die out to yourself. Uh, being religious, quoting the Bible, uh, crying crocodile tears around the altar. Uh, there's only one thing that's going to get the devil's attention. Uh, it's when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired uh, and you say, I'm sick of this. I'm going to die uh, so Jesus can be resurrected in me. Uh, they'll come alive uh, and that life will come a new gotta die see if you're dead you're dead <sighs> lots of folks aren't dead got too many folks picking up out of the grave amen you walk over to the graveyard guess what everybody in the graveyard's dead that's why they call it graveyard dead you're dead nobody's sinning in the grave there's nobody committing adultery in the grave. There ain't no jealous people in the grave. <laughs> nobody getting drunk in the grave. Oh, I could stop right here if I had the time. I mean, there's nobody sinning because there's nobody living. And you can't sin unless you're alive. But you got to be dead to it. Somebody say amen. I guarantee you, if you were walked down to one of them graveyards one night, about midnight, and you're standing there all by yourself, and you're looking at them graves, what in the world would you be doing that for? I don't know. But if you were there, and all of a sudden you look down, and that gravestone started moving There'd be some moving in your grooving, amen. Uh, you'd head down the road you came down, but two times faster than what you did. Uh, why? Because people that die are supposed to lay there dead. They're not supposed to be moving. Uh, I'm just telling you, we got too many people playing possum. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, a possum plays dead. Uh, you think he's dead, uh, but the minute you get up and walk away from him, he jumps up and runs back into the woods. Uh, got too many people playing church. Uh, we got too many people coming to church. You just do the same thing the same way. You do it all the time. Uh, you leave out of here. You got your Sunday go to meet and close on, uh, but you leave out of here uh, and you're the same way you was on Monday that you was on Friday and Saturday. Uh, you just put a little bit of Jesus on on, on Sunday. Uh, you don't put your Jesus on. Uh, you get your Jesus on the inside. Uh, and when you get him on the inside, he'll work on the outside. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, it's more than going to church. Uh, it's more than being religious. Uh, it's more than hearing a preacher scream and cry. Uh, it's more than just singing songs. Uh, it's about saying, Lord, uh, there's enough for me that I don't want any more of this. Uh, I want to see Jesus resurrected on the inside of me uh, and then and only then uh, there'll come a revival in your life. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, you got to die. You got to die. One time, Silas and Mary, I'm about to close. (laughs) I'm circling the runway. But one day, Silas and Mary got in bed. And, 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 and these ornery little boys went by their house one night, and they were tucked in bed. One of them little ornery little boys said, Silas is God. It's time to die. And, man, he walked straight up. Silas, it's time to die. This is God. He got so scared, he jumped up out of bed, crawled underneath that bed, and that honorary boy said it again. By that time, Mary got out of the bed, said, Silas, climb out from underneath that bed and die like a man. Amen. Uh, you got to die like a man. Uh, I mean, that's what God's love. Not that you're physically dead. Uh, you're not going to do God any favors by being physically dead. He's over somebody that's already dead uh, and walk in the streets of Muskogee, Oklahoma. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, that you're the same on Sunday as you were on Monday uh, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, and when you're all by yourself, uh, guess what? You're still the same. Why is that? Uh, because Christ Jesus lives on the inside of me. Uh, I'm crucified with Christ. Uh, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, uh, but it's Christ that lives in me. Oh, you can beat on the altar, beg God for a revival all you want to, but I'm telling you, it ain't going to do any good. That was my point when I told Kalita, you got to die. You can cry. You can do all. You just got to give up. Die like a man or a woman. See, let me just real quickly. Elijah, I was there at Mount Carmel. Oh, my word. Folks that are going with me to Israel, guess what? We're going to Mount Carmel. (sighs) And there at Mount Carmel, see, I'm just using this as a type, a type of the flesh, the the, the prophets of Baal, a type of the spirit, the prophet Elijah. Here's the difference. This is why you got to die. So, see, first of all, the prophets of Baal, a type of the flesh, they tried to work the plan of God, and so they're God. And so they, they beat around the altar, they cut themselves, and did in, in Kate, and didn't, spiritual things, amen. They, they, they just, they just they did their little religious deal. They had their little rock band up on stage and turned the lights down until you couldn't see your hand and put the smoke machines out. Strobe lights. Disco ball. Thank you. The works, man. Nothing happened. The prophet God said, let the God that answers by fire, let him be God, okay? They cried out, oh, send some fire, send some fire, send the fire, send the fire. Fire never came. They tried everything they could. They tried it all day long. uh, And finally, after they couldn't make it happen, because you can't make it happen in the flesh, uh, the man of God said, scoot back. And he said, let me show you what God can do. And you know the story. He fell on his knees. He prayed a 63-word prayer. uh, And the Bible said the fire of God fell from heaven uh, and consumed the sacrifice. But let me show you something here. The revival hadn't happened yet, okay? Not yet. That was just the fire of God. Lots of folks get that mixed up. The revival wasn't in the fire. The revival was in the rain, the refreshing. Uh, The move of God was in the rain. And so what did the prophet do after the fire fell? He looked at all that nation of Israel and said, you've sinned against God. It's time to repent. It's time to get right with God. He said, I want you to take every one of these prophets of Baal in the groves down there to that river, and I want you to cut their heads off. you got to die, okay? Uh, you're going to have to kill that flesh. Uh, and so there they went. They went down there. They cut their heads off. Uh, and there was Elijah with that, with that uh, false prophet blood still dripping from his camel's hair. Uh, he climbed back up on top of Mount Carmel. Uh, he had to pray seven times, but on the seventh 
time the service said, I see a cloud uh, the size of a man's hand. Uh, and I think it's, I, well, I'm, I'm adding a little bit, but I think that's a revival. Uh, Elijah jumped up and said, uh, there's coming a revival. There's coming a rain. Uh, and he beat Ahab back into the city. Uh, you see, it wasn't until those prophets of Baal were dead. Uh, it wasn't until they cut their heads off of those false prophets of the flesh. Uh, and if you're ever going to have revival, uh, it's not about having fire. Uh, it's about dying out to the flesh. Uh, and then God can move and execute his life inside of you. Uh, and you will see God then. Oh, yeah. I wish I had more time. But the Bible said, Samson put his head in the lap of Delilah. Not delight. Delilah. Striking, isn't it? But anyhow. I'm going to have to get a drink of water. <laughs> oh, oh, that's going to go out on TV. Hold on a minute. Can a brother get a little drink while he's working? <laughs> y'all look thirsty. Y'all look like y'all could use some Gatorade. <sighs> Lady's head in the lap of Delilah. You know the story. I'm not even, I don't have time. Cut his hair off. That was a sign of his consecration to God. Found himself chained up, eyes plucked out. I mean, I want you to know, he was shorn. And there he was, going round and round and round in the religious meal treading out the corn for the enemy of God. Let me just tell you this in closing. A lot of the activity in the church is nothing more than treading out the corn for the enemy of God. When you get up in national television, you have 10 million people watching you, and you say there's more ways to God than just Jesus. Well, let me tell you something. That's an apostate. Mark it down. And all they're doing is in the religious meal, but they're so good, and they're so flashy. And they're so, so wonderful. Uh, the devil always is. He's going around. A lot of our activity just treading out corn, just doing what the devil wants us to do, going round and round and round and round and round. In your life, you're just going round and round and round. You can't seem to break that cycle. Just round and round and round and round we go. Uh, you ring around the rosies, pocket full of posies. Round and round we go. Uh, and you just never seem to break out. Uh, but there came a time when the Bible said, how be it the hair of his head began to grow again. Uh, that was a sign of his consecration, his sanctification unto God and his consecration unto the Lord uh, and he said one day while he's going around wait a minute I'm feeling something happening here uh, and I don't know about you but I'm beginning to feel a few nubs myself right now okay uh, in the church uh, I can feel people beginning to hunger for the move of God for the touch of God for a real Holy Ghost revival not an entertainment revival but a Holy Ghost revival uh, and all of a sudden he got to a place he realized it was coming back uh, he bowed his head and said God be with me they led him out to the temple of Dagon, uh, and the Bible said they made sport of him. Can I tell you, the world has made sport of the church uh, with all these national evangelists and all these preachers and pastors uh, that we find out later they preached one thing and lived another. Uh, they have made sport out of us. Uh, but I'm like I'm like this man of God, Samson. Uh, it said, this is it. One more time, God, just one more time. Uh, and they led him out there. And you know what he cried? He cried out and said, God, avenge me of my eyes. Uh, and if there's ever been a time we need to have our eyes avenged it would be right now you see we're living in a time that nothing's wrong anymore nobody sees it's wrong uh, you talk about sin well i don't see nothing wrong with that uh, no, and we, we we've just kind of morphed this hodgepodge religion uh, until nothing is wrong and i'm not talking about all that made man man-made religion kind of stuff uh, that you got to wear your hair a certain way and you, you know we're going to measure your skirt and all that uh, i'm talking about really living for jesus christ uh, not just on a sunday but on a 
on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, on Sunday, you come back in here and God is still real. Somebody say amen. That's what I'm talking about. A vengeance of our eyes. There's nothing wrong anymore. Y'all getting quiet. Nothing. They say we can't see it anymore. And you know what I've thought? I used to get upset, but they can't see it because blind men can't see. Blind men won't see. They'll never see until the glorious gospel because the God of this world has their eyes blinded. But the church is blinded. I hate to sound a little bit negative. I'm sorry that's not the positive message you heard before you came to the church with a billion-dollar smile. You're a winner. Winner. You better die out to yourself and know he's the winner. It's not about you. It's not about you. My God avenges my eyes, he said. And then it wasn't until his Nazarite vow of separation of the Lord is renewed. And it won't be until the church's vow to the Lord of consecration, separation, is renewed to the Lord. Come back to the instruments. See, I ain't doing too bad. The Bible said it wasn't until then his hair, the hair of his head began to grow again and the hair, that was, that was a type of God's glory restored. And they led him out to the temple. Standing there in the temple, they put one hand on one and they said, God, just one more time. He knew he was going to die. God, I'd like before I got out of here just one more time. I'd like to pull the roof out on the devil one time. One more time, Lord. That ought to be our prayer. One more time. God, do it one more time. In my life, Lord, I, I want to see his glory. I want to see that old-fashioned, out-running, hand-clapping, foot-stomping, devil-killing revival. Amen. Pastor, you're a little out of date. You're, you're a little out of step with reality, man. This is a new age. That's some of that, some of that old country bumpkin stuff. Say what you want to say. I'm telling you, we need a revival in the church. In the church. And he bowed himself, and the Bible said he pulled the roof in on the, on all of those Philistines. And he died with the Philistines. And he killed more in his death than he ever did in his life. Simple. But you'll do more in your death. I'm not talking about your physical death. I'm talking about your dying in Jesus. You can never do in your life. Our, the church is doing phenomenal things around the world. But let me tell you something. A lot of it's the flesh. Just think what we could do if we just die out. Had more people, I had the spirit of these missionaries <laughs> that are willing to take the gospel to every creature. Cross rivers, ride mules, swing on vines, just to take the gospel. I noticed that there wasn't any television cameras in those little small churches Brother Dale, Sister Delight went to. Doesn't make real good TV. But they're not doing it for that. That's not what it's about. But now let's talk about you a minute. Where are you at? When I was in Bible college, let me close with this old story. There was, a, there was one of the kids that was with us. We were all kids in those days. He was scared of his own shadow. People took advantage of him. One night, me and my best friend Clifford Hurst came in from preaching out over the weekend and was going to our room because we were roommates. I said, hey, let's go scare Brian. He said, how are we going to do it? I said, I know how we can do it. We went in our room, got some old stocking caps, you know, with the eyeballs to cut out in the, in the mouth. And, and the Bible school I went to, the doors weren't very 
They were locked, but you could get in them. All you had to do is kind of raise up on pop, pop, and you could pop it open. I said, I'm going to pop this. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning, okay? You mean to tell me, preacher, you would do something like that? <laughs> you have no idea. I said, what we'll do is we'll get down to his room. I'll pop the door. I'll cut the light on. When I cut the light on, I said, he's going to wake up, look at us. And then I'm going to cut the light back on. And you know when that happens, that image is burned into your brain. Oh, it's going to be good. So we did that. Popped the door, cut the light. He looked up and saw both of us in the stocking masks, talking caps. I cut that light back off. And I'm not kidding with you. The brother came up out of the bed, went over the top of my head, and he was running at 3 o'clock in the morning. Ah, 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 ah. And then we ran after him. Took, hey, shut up, man. You're going to wake everybody up. We're going to get in trouble. That's the kind of things they did to this guy. Or we <laughs> did to this guy. But one night, one night, of this I was not a part of, be clear. One guy went into his room. It was a cold, cold night in Missouri. Sit down with him and say, hey, Brian, I want you to be praying about this. There's somebody in this dorm talking about committing suicide. He said, really, who is it? We, we don't want to tell any names, but just pray for him. God knows. Man, he got real concerned. But while he was telling him that, there were two other guys <sighs> climbed up on top of the dorm. They'd made a homemade dummy, put a noose around its neck. And as he was talking, they were lowering it down in front of his window. Tied it off, got back down. Everybody met in the room next door. One of them said loud enough, hey, Look outside. It's snowing. Now, no one saw it, but you can imagine if you knew Brian. He's very particular. He didn't have to worry about putting the, you know, the, the dorm supervisor come by with a white glove checking for dust. He checked his own dust. We lived like pigs, and, man, he was, he was that kind of guy. Everything in place. So you could hear him as he scooted out of his chair pushed it back into the desk laid his pencil down walked over to the window took one curtain brushed it back took the other curtain brushed it back then he reached for the blind but he gave it a little yank and when he did what he was looking for, he never saw. And what he saw, he wasn't looking for. Because when that blind came up, he was looking eyeball to eyeball with that dead man. And when he saw what he thought was a dead man, I'm telling the truth. You could hear him down on the bottom level of that dormitory as he screamed out of that room. And all you could hear was as he ran down that aisle, he did it! He did it! He did it. He did it. They finally, it took him hours to calm him down. I know that's cruel, but I want you to know uh, I'd like to leave out of church this morning after I've taken a pretty good long vacation uh, and just be able to say, uh, the devil look at us and say, you know, they've always talked about dying. They always talked about praying through. They always talked about getting right with God. Uh, I'd like for you to get up out of this altar this morning uh, and the devil look you right between the eyes and let him go running and screaming out here. They did it. They did it. They did it. They always talked about it, but now they really did it. How long are you going to talk about it? How long are you going to keep putting it off? How long are you going to keep sweeping it under the carpet, hiding it in the closet? It's time to come out of the closet, get on your knees and fall on your knees and say, God, there is a living God in heaven, and we need a revival. Can I tell you, he killed more in his death than he ever did in his life. Can I want you to know, you'll do more for God. God than you could ever do if you'll just die to yourself. Uh, the devil's like a cockroach. Uh, you can 
spray him. You can you can you can fog him. Uh, you can set off bombs, uh, but they'll just hunt a crack. Uh, amen. But let me tell you something. Uh, if you'll turn that light on, uh, he'll really hunt that crack. Uh, they try to get out uh, of the light, uh, and the devil always tries to get out of the light. Uh, I don't know about what you plan on doing, uh, but I'm telling you what this pastor plans on doing. Uh, I plan on turning on my light. Uh, I'm talking about turn on the light of the gospel everywhere I go. Uh, I don't want anybody to think uh, or not know that I'm not a Christian uh, and I am born again uh, and that power inside of me is not my power. Uh, it's the power of God. Uh, I want to turn the light on with my faith. Uh, I want to turn the light on with my prayers. Uh, I want to turn the light on with my preaching and teaching. Uh, I want to turn the light, glorious gospel light on uh, so those that are in darkness will know uh, there's only one way to God uh, and it's through Jesus Christ. Uh, you've got to die uh, if he's ever going to be resurrected through you. I want you to bow your